Hey guys, it's Utonia here, and today I'm going to talk about a dual prop rocket gamma, which is kind of an interesting fit. It's not really that cost efficient, and there are some weird mechanics going on behind the scenes, which makes this fit a lot less efficient than you would think it would be otherwise. So the fit I'm using is uh, three Tech 2 rocket launches in the highs, just for uh, you know DPS, and I'm not using a light missile fit because this is more of a uh, close range focused ship. So I've just got a uh, restrained micro warp drive for the additional uh, cap benefit and the lower sig with it on. Tech 2 web, uh, Tech 2 scram, Tech 2 uh, 1MN afterburner, small ancillary armor repairer, damage control Tech 2 and Tech 2 ballistic control unit. And then in the rig slots I'm running uh, triple uh, whole rigs Tech 2. So the, the aim of this fit mostly is it's a, a pretty strong brawler. Uh, it's very similar to the dual prop Dramio in that regard, except uh, it's a bit slower than the dual prop Dramio, but it has selectable uh, damage type, and it also it, it's a bit more clean than, than the Dramio, in my opinion, because you don't have to rely on drones as much, so you don't really have to worry about losing them when you're roaming. That's also like another big consideration, I think. And it's also kind of like an off-meta thing. One thing that I found was there was a lot of just chips that would just freely aggro me at zero. You know, just like an Atron or a Condor would just aggro me at zero. And uh, it's not something that you'd really expect to, to see happen to a Dramiel because everyone expects the Gamma to be uh, like long range kiting fit with, you know, minimal tank or maybe a medium shield extender at most and a free kill mail if you uh, engage a tech on frigate at zero mostly. Like, you know, I've killed several. Uh, Garmas in my uh, Kestrel, I've killed several Garmas in other ships. So a lot of people really expect, you know, the Garmas to traditionally be that kind of, you know, like lowish tank uh, kiting fit. So ca using this can catch a few people off guard. Uh, the weird mechanics that I was talking about come into play with the uh, the rockets on this ship. So the Garma is quite interesting because it has this uh, roll bonus which uh, triples the speed of your missiles But it also halves the speed. Uh, sorry, it halves the flight time So what that means is that they they arrive three times faster But with the half flight time bonus it ends up being you know a 50% a range bonus So you have the same range in theory as a as a Kestrel the same 50% bonus you can see here at a 12 kilometer range now That's not actually 12 kilometer range because uh, on these uh, on these rockets, you'll see that they only have a 1.5 second flight time. And whenever uh, I do have a video on missile mechanics, which I recommend you see, uh, which will explain this in more detail. But whenever you have a, a missile flight time that is less than a whole flat second, the the number on the end, the decimal, becomes a percentage chance that it travels to the next second. So on this Gamma with rockets. Um, it's, they're not going to travel 12 kilometers. What's going to happen is that they uh, they'll travel eight kilometers, this speed, 8.4 kilometers. That's how far they're going to go, and they have a 50% chance to double that range at uh, two seconds. So they will, my missiles are only are ever only ever going to go 8.4 kilometers, or they're going to go 16.8, and there's no in between there. So you need to be very careful, and you need to really understand this mechanic when you're flying the Skarma, because you know you would be full, you could get fooled into thinking, well. You know, I've got this Tech 2 Scram, I'm just going to, uh, you know, orbit at 12k and use my missiles at that range, right? With this 13km Scram, it's not going to work. You're going to lose 50% of your DPS at that range. Now, it is still an option, but you just got to remember that uh, you will lose 50% of your DPS. Same with uh, Kadari Navy uh, rockets as well. If you uh, if you load those up, uh, they will only travel 10 kilometers, or they will travel... Uh, 20 kilometers they will not travel the 15 kilometers listed on the tooltip so again uh, they go just over 10 kilometers like 10 uh, 10 kilometers a second basically or 10,000 meters a second but uh, they were only ever they're only ever guaranteed to go that far because the ch chance of them going two seconds is 50 percent so it only ever go 10 or 20 kilometers on on the gamma and again same thing for the javelins as you can imagine they will either go uh, 15 kilometers or they'll go 30 kilometers. There is no in between. So you, you will lose DPS. Again, I'll just show the tooltip on these. They, they'll go 15, just over 15 kilometers, guaranteed, and they have a 50% chance to go 30 kilometers. So you need to be very, very careful 
Uh, I've seen a lot of people run similar style Garma fits like this, even with blingy scrams and Kai at 15k, but don't have any kind of modules to ex to guarantee the rockets will get there, and they just lose 50% of their DPS. And it's uh, it's really really crucial to remember that and keep that in mind. What you can do. If you want to, I would only suggest this if you're kind of going all in on this mechanic and you're trying to bling the scram maybe, and bling the red, uh, bling the web. If you go a tech two flight time rig, and one tech one flight time rig, you get a two two point zero three seconds, which guarantees they travel the extra distance, as well as uh, you know what's listed on the the tooltip. So then you'll get the sixteen kilometer reach missiles guaranteed, and then you can just go for like a Kalari Navy scram, and you scram people at sixteen k, and you just hold them at that range while you shoot them with the sixteen kilometer missiles. But then it kind of gets into this weird uh, kind of hybrid si situation where you, do I just run a light missile armor at that point because you know losing two tech two hull rigs is a big knock on your tank. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's just a weird thing to keep in mind. Just to go over the bonuses again, I kind of jumped in on that one. It gets a 10% bonus to Warp Scrambler and Warp Disruptor range. Again, I'm not really capitalizing on the Warp Scrambler bonus that much, and this is a really cheap fit uh, for, for a Garma anyway. Like, uh, I've only spent about 15 million isk on the modules, and most of that's in the uh, hull rigs. The main cost is coming from the Garma itself. The Garma hull is about 54 million, which isn't actually that bad, but... Um, it might uh, limit your choice in flying it if you have uh, lower thumbs. And the other bonus is just a flat 25% to missile damage per level. Uh, a good comparison to this, if you want a cheaper option, is the uh, Kadari Navy hook bill here. Uh, this hook bill has uh, uh, more damage uh, with kinetic than the Gamma, but slightly less with other types. And uh, it's uh, much cheaper, it's about half the price of this Gamma, and it still has dual prop with a very similar tank actually, it just doesn't have the small auxiliary. This has a uh, 6.5k tank, whereas uh, my Gamma's rocking 6k, thanks to the extra pirate uh, HP, and well also because I'm running tech 2 on this, and the hook bill has a DPS rig, and it's running tech 1 because core defense field extenders are expensive. He, there's no real point running tech 2 core defense field extenders on a hook bill, obviously it increases the price too much. But if you want the uh, more uh, sort of uh, friendly alternative, a uh, more uh, wallet friendly alternative, check out the uh, Kadari Navy hook bill. I'm sure you could probably do a very bad knockoff Kestrel of this too if you want to save even more ISK. But I would probably stick to the normal original shield uh, Kestrel. But yeah, so this this Garm is kind of interesting because of that. Like I said, uh, I, I think there are better options than this. The Dual prop Dramio is very similar to this. The, this Garma has uh, detectable damage and it also has the bonus scram. The, the scram is nice for like, anti slingshotting. Like a 16 kilometer scram is very, very good for you know running away from people. You know, when you have people mutually scrammed and you're trying to get away, like just having the long scram just keeps them off you so you can get out. Uh, it's also nice just for catching other Garmas and such. So, yeah, weird ship. Probably not all that efficient. I just thought it was interesting because of the sort of underlying underlying mechanics, and just because it's kind of an off-meta ship, which is you know pretty cool, just to get people to aggro you. So I hope you enjoy the clips. So in this first fight versus uh, Hakati, I've kind of chased him around a bit. Uh, he didn't like me burning at him on a gate. I think he probably thought he was light, light missile uh, point. He didn't really want to get caught out by me. So he warped to the sun. I followed him to the sun at zero. And I think he, he will engage here because he thinks that I'm in a really bad position. Because he probably assumes that I'm in a uh, a light missile uh, gamma. But I am actually in dual prop control drop, uh, gamma. So I'm able to pull, a, pull away from him here even though he has dual webs. And I'm just able to orbit him at 7,500. I'm orbiting at 7,500 and not at 12k or using the longer range scram distance as you might expect. Because again, like I mentioned with the rocket mechanics, uh, my rockets are already guaranteed to go 8,400 meters. So I want to make sure I'm getting all of the guaranteed DPS just to uh, break this guy as fast as possible. Uh, this Hakati makes a mistake, I think, by going into defensive mode here. He's been in defensive mode the entire time, really, and uh, because of that, he doesn't get the sharpshooter bonus on null, and so he's not able to hit me at this range. And he also, also I think he's like changing his uh, like ammo around a bit because there's like breaks in his damage, and he's definitely not capped out because uh, I don't have any new power, and he 
didn't actually have a rep on his fit. It was like a whole tank to mag stab fit, which was kind of weird. So in this next fight, I jump into a Gama. He's here. Take a look at him, and he's light missile fit. I'm also in a Gama, so I imagine he was actually pretty uh, eager to engage me because he probably thinks it's going to be like a light missile duel or something. But uh, I'm able to just catch him here and uh, kill him with my rockets. Whenever you see a uh, light missile Gama. Uh, a lot of the time they will just fight you because, you know, Gamas versus Gama duels are kind of common. Kind of like Slicer versus Slicer duels are pretty common too. But you can just like sort of catch them out uh, with your uh, rocket fit if they don't look at your look at your fit and they engage in a bad position. That would be kind of normal for the other kind of fights. This is why I like the rocket Gama is there's a lot of, a lot of ships will just aggro you because they just assume that you're in the light missile fit. And in this case, this guy didn't check out my fit or know how I was fit, so he just engaged in a bad position, and I'm able to uh, kill his Gama. So the Gama is quite good at ganking too, just because it goes over 5k a second with MWD. It has the really long scram too, 16k scram. Just gives it that extra bit of reach when people are trying to run from you. In this case, uh, this guy and his Orca roll are in a belt. I whooped. Uh, directly to the belt, but uh, the orca already got out, so I guess he like automatically tried to warp out as soon as I was reported in local, or as soon as I came into local and able to get his coveta though. Uh, speaking of the Gama's reputation, as we mentioned earlier, the Gama is a great ship for you know pissing people off. Everyone hates Gamas, right? You know, whenever you see a Gama on D scan in in low sec, it just you know makes you feel like that guy is a dick for flying a Gama. It just has that reputation, which is really cool, right? Because a lot of people want to kill Gamas, especially because they have the... Also, they you know, they normally blinged out a lot of a lot more of the time. And, you know, if you just want to be a dick, you know, you can just fly this ship. And I really love flying this ship just because it's great at, uh, you know, getting those, those dank local uh, comments that you need. You know, give the good old... Uh, give the good fight in local after you kill, kill a mining ship in your Gama. And you'll get the, the exact type of response that you expect. And it's great for riling people up and getting people to like form up to kill you. I've never seen people get as mad or like want to form up to kill you as much as flying a Gama. And <laughs> it can be really funny if you want to roleplay that kind of like douchebag kind of thing in, in local for getting fights. So this next fight is uh, against an artillery Cinnabal. I already know he's artillery because he aggroed me on the other side. That's why he has the red damage sphere around him. So I, I know that he's kind of eager to fight. And I know he also has artillery and he also has long point. Because again, he aggroed me on the other side. I don't know what the rest of his third mids were. I mean, potentially he could have been, uh, you know, like uh, had like dual prop or web or a scram or something else to go along with his disruptor but i was not uh, too afraid because i have dual prop the great thing about dual prop is you have the flexibility to uh, sort of run away uh, when you when you want um he is shield boosting here as you as you can see um not too sure if it was like an active tank or if it was xlsb um i've at least burned through a few of his charges i think it's xlsb because he stopped boosting at this point and it may doesn't make sense uh, to not boost with a normal shield booster if he wanted to sort of maximize his health i think he probably didn't boost because he didn't want to waste uh, the ancillary charge so i'm just working down the drones here getting rid of these infiltrators in hindsight this was probably a mistake because uh, you know i'm not really having much problems tanking it and uh, i have a much higher uh, hull buffer than i do uh, armor buffer so even though it kind of looks like i'm taking damage i've still got you know a good portion of my ehp left so I think I probably should have, uh, you know, bait tanked a bit more because we are on this gate here. He's only 16 kilometers off the gate. When If he wants to run away or try to make it back to the gate, he probably can. I don't really have the DPS to uh, break through an XLSB if that's indeed what he has. And, you know, good chance he has it. Um, he doesn't have any kind of armor buffer as far as I can tell. I mean, he definitely has the resistance modules because my... Uh, thermal missiles are only doing about one third of what they normally should which probably indicates that he has like a thermal rig and an invo effect maybe didn't spend too much time looking at his ship i think he probably has an invo on it um so i get him i get him down low um at this point i figured that maybe he reloaded his ancillary that's why he didn't boost until now i did actually stop the reload on my thermal missiles because i figured uh, you know i would reload to nova once i got him into armor because at this point he's de and he's trying to go back to the gate. And this is kind of why I wish I uh, 
I, I left an infiltrator or two alive just to make it look like I'm taking damage and so maybe he would forget about them or you know I think a lot of the time when people are trying to de-aggro they often forget about their drones so they might leave it he might have left it on me for an extra few seconds uh, I think if he if he did have a, an active tank instead of XIS speed like a more traditional shield booster he probably wouldn't be as interested in running because he could have just held me here indefinitely and just tank me until his friends came uh, local went up by three in this fight, so I am a bit, uh, I, I am anticipating him to get some backup at some point, um, which is cu also kind of why I wanted to kill the drones, so I wouldn't be in a horrible position if he got backup, because, you know, we are in Horde's main crabbing pocket, the chance of him getting help is quite likely. At this point, I decided to control space and maybe go for a bump, because I realized he's, you know, only like 2k away from the gate. And to make it there in like about 10 seconds. But the Gamma's mass is so terrible that uh, like even a, a pretty reasonable bump like that did, didn't really do anything to him. And now he has a Caracal coming in and unfortunately he manages to jump the gate as he was entering armor. So that's the Gamma. Uh, it's really interesting because it has that weird reputation as I was mentioning where people kind of just really want to kill them. Because they're normally uh, pimp fit and also they have that bad reputation of being, you know, really annoying. And they also just have a reputation of just dying in scram range. So you just get kind of a lot more fights than you would normally expect to find in a ship like this, I think. If you put yourself in kind of situations that would be like typically bad for the normal gamma, but really good for this kind of rocket gamma. And I think it's really interesting that because of like the reputation of the ship... Uh, you actually get a lot of fights. Uh, I, I didn't include uh, a few of them because uh, they were quite bad fights. Like It was just like an Atrium versus a Gamo and stuff. But it's so interesting like how many people are just willing to aggro you at zero kilometers on a gate or something just because they think that they have you in a really bad position. But in actual fact, uh, you're in a good position. Um, I kind of feel like this is a, a, a ship that's probably not worth the price, at least in the way that I'm doing it. Um, you know, blinging the, the web and scram, you have to go with those flight time rigs because of the weird, you know, missile mechanics involving the ship. So you, uh, you don't really have too many options here, I think. Um, it's not really a ship that's actually easy to pimp out, and I think at that point you're probably better off just looking at the light missile gamma if you want to fly something a bit more pimp. And also, uh, as I mentioned, the Kaldari Navy hook bill comes fairly close to this ship uh, in terms of stats, just without the small ancillary, but slightly more buffer, and it's it's easily like half the price and you could probably make it a lot less expensive than the one that I was running anyway because I have a uh, faction medium shield extender on mine or my hook bill fit so yeah uh, check the ship out it can be pretty fun to fly just because it has that you know just gets fights sometimes because of people choosing to en engage it when they think you're in a bad position but otherwise uh, you know I think the hook bill is probably better value for your buck uh, thanks for watching and you know check out my other videos especially that missile flight time mechanics video if you're still kind of confused about the missile mechanics I was talking about earlier